Welcome back to another instalment of New Zealand's Bird of the Week, where in this video I will be talking about the Antipodean albatross, birds which vary in colour from black and white through to chocolate brown, breezing almost exclusively on the Auckland and Antipodes Islands. I hope you enjoy. Antipodean albatrosses are large seabirds that, as mentioned, vary in colour depending on their sex, age and race, uniformly possessing pink bills and general white, black and brown coloration. Being albatrosses, they are quite large birds, being around 110cm in length and weighing anywhere from 4.5 to 8.5kg when fully grown. They are most similar to the wandering albatross, to which they are often confused for, although, while indeed being closely related, differ in that the wandering birds are larger with more massive bills, and also being more often than not lightly coloured. They are also more distantly related to the northern and southern royal albatrosses, which are whiter plumaged and have a black cutting edge to their upper mandible. Birds are further separated into two subspecies, being the Auckland and Antipodes Island birds. The Auckland Island birds, occasionally referred to as the Gibson's albatross, are lighter in colour than the Antipodes birds, with the males being lighter coloured than the females, and birds overall getting lighter as they age. Like other large albatrosses, they are efficient at low energy flying, exploiting small updrafts created by the wind and waves to glide for kilometres while rarely flapping their wings. They range at sea across the South Pacific from Australia to as far as Chile. They feed predominantly on cephalopods and, to a lesser extent, fish, being interesting in that they have not been recorded eating any crustaceans unlike other related animals, taking their food either from the surface or through shallow plunge dives. Before breeding, they spend most of their lives at sea until the time for breeding arises until they're about 7 to 20 years old. They only breed and raise young every two years, with them having elaborate courtship displays among their pairs, which last until one or another dies. They nest on ridges, slopes or plateaus, and will build their nests in the open or within patchy vegetation, especially preferring tussock grassland. They lay a single egg between December and February, and take a whole year to hatch the egg and raise the chick, with pairs taking shifts of up to three weeks while incubating. Around 3,200 pairs breed each year on the Auckland Islands and about 3,700 on the Antipodes, although their numbers are declining. The decline has in fact been at an astonishing 5% per year since 2005, meaning at current rates there may be fewer than 400 breeding pairs in total by the 2040s, and for such a long-lived species that doesn't breed all too often and without large clutch sizes, this makes them incredibly susceptible to extinction. Threats are numerous, but the ones closest to home involve mammalian predators, with the main Auckland Island still possessing pigs and cats, which often target the chicks. The biggest threat, however, comes from their attraction to boats and their long line baits through their discards, which has seen a great number of them being killed, through them getting hooks and drowning. As an example, in 2020 alone, 10 birds were reported as being killed by New Zealand fishing vessels, with one boat killing four over a two hour period while fishing off the East Cape. They are also vulnerable to sea surface temperature changes, as this has led many to forage further north, where they may be more susceptible to death from these vessels. Fortunately, protections have been put in place to assist in their recovery, although more is still to be done, and you can read more about this through the sources provided in the description if you want to learn more about their plights and what is being done. And with that, I thank you for watching this instalment of New Zealand's Bird of the Week. For next time, you are now able to vote for the Black Petrel, familiar birds of pelagic waters that are generally solitary. With that, I'll see you next time, whenever that may be.